Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sport Fish Boat. Well, welcome back to Renovation Sport Fish Episode 2. Uh, hopefully you checked out Episode 1. If you haven't, go ahead and check it out. If you did um, and you're back for more, well, um, I'm glad you came back for more. Uh, before we get into what I did in 2012, I want to take a little bit of a step back just to talk about how I removed the windshield and the windshield frame uh, for working on the foredeck and doing the beams and clamps and all that stuff. So, in front of me I have some of the components to it. Here's actually one of the windshields that I took out. Piece of glass that's about four feet long, about two feet high, and about a quarter inch thick. This happens to be the port side one. Both are in good condition. I'll be reusing both of them. Just have to tint them once I get them in. Another component is this, I'm going to call it a retainer. It's a piece of aluminum quarter round. And there's two pieces per window. This is, I believe, an upper one. Then there's a lower one that would go below it. So two pieces will hold this whole window assembly in. And this has holes drilled about every two and a half inches or so for the fasteners. Fasteners are, they call it scutcheon pins. They're about three quarters of an inch long, and I don't know what material they're made out of. I thought they were steel, chrome steel, but I think they might be some form of a um, stainless steel. Not really sure. I'm going to have to replace some of them, so I'm going to have to find a source for them. Now, I have a diagram of how all these things go together, because I like doing diagrams. And you can see the assembly. It's kind of a section cut. We'll call it the top frame, because it's in that orientation. And you see how the wood has a channel cut into it, or a notch cut into it, and then there's some sealant, or there's supposed to be some sealant, uh, the glass, and then this aluminum retainer, and then the fastener, which just gets nailed into the wood frame. So, to remove this whole assembly here, first thing I had to do is remove this retaining piece. And this thing was painted in with many, many coats of paint. So I don't know if they ever even ever resealed this window. Probably not. So the first thing I had to do is scrape off all that paint. So uh, that was a little bit of a chore, but you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, then, then I tried removing some of these nails or pins individually with a screwdriver trying to pry them out. Now it was just taking forever, it was difficult to do. So I found the best way to get this off was to just take a putty knife and insert it in between the frame and this retainer and just pry it away little by little, being kind of gentle not to bend it too much. It could take a little bit of bending, but you know, I didn't want to break it. I don't know how fragile it was. And that seemed to work. It, it got it all pulled off and pulled all the nails out. Some of them broke, but most of them came out. And uh, and then that was it. That was done. Then it came time to remove the glass. 
Now, even though you can see that there's about five gallons of silicone sealant on the bottom edge, the rest of the window didn't really have any sealant in it or what was there was very dried out. And even the silicone sealant wasn't sticking to the glass. So both of these window pieces of glass popped right out. I mean, it was amazing. Uh, a miracle. Uh, so I got those both out fairly easy. And then it came time to remove these all the wood pieces. So I started with the wood trim piece that's located on the inside. There's two of them. They go below, just below the window. Those are just uh, screwed in with uh, some silicon bronze screws and then plugged with wood plugs. So I just popped the plugs out, unscrewed the screws. They weren't used. They didn't use any sealant or anything to attach those. So they just kind of, those came off pretty easy. And I wanted to remove the two lower uh, window frame wood pieces. Those are pretty rotted in the corners. They are kind of a miter, miter type of um, construction with the rest of the frame. So the corners are pretty rotted. They didn't have to do much there. So all I really had to do was cut around the perimeter of the deck uh, and took the piece of deck right with it. Um, and so I just cut it with a sawzall or my jigsaw or whatever. And uh, those two pieces came right out pretty easy. And then that just left the center piece. And that was even easier because all I did was take it, do a couple twists on it, and bang, it pulled right out. And you could see how rotted the actual frame was, especially in all the corners and joints. And there was sealant there, but it doesn't seal and doesn't do anything with rotted wood. So the wood really failed more so than the sealant. Anyways, and that was it. The uh, windshield was out and the framing was out and uh, I could move on to uh, doing the next uh, task. So the side glass was the first thing I tackled in 2012. The weather was cold, it was in the winter, and couldn't do anything outside along the perimeter of the boat. It was all shrink wrapped. So I had to stick with inside things and this was going to help me move along of the deck project in the end. So I've got one of the side pieces of window here. Now there's two of these per side. Um, they're both the same shape. Actually they're all the same shape. They're all interchangeable. Uh, the outside window opening looks doesn't look symmetrical because it's not, but all the framing inside is all symmetrical so they're able to use uh, all the same pieces of glass, which was good. Now these are in good shape too. This one happens to have some tint still left on and I'm going to take that off and get these retinted a bit darker. And on the ends, two of the pieces on the ends, they use this um, sliding edge channel, which is just a stainless steel channel with some felt, and the felt in this case is really all damaged and falling apart. So. I have some new stuff I'm going to use uh, put on uh, put on these. So that's the window, and then here is the replacement felt uh, channel edging. Uh, you cut this to length. I use a Dremel to do it. I've done it on one window already. It goes pretty easy. And then the other component is the sliding window channel. This is a double channel because there's two windows. You can get them with a single one. This is also stainless steel and it's attached with some small uh, little stainless steel screws. It's not uh, it's not drilled from the factory so I have, to, I have to drill my own screws but that's what you want to do anyways. So those are the components. So I have a diagram here which shows how these windows are installed and because I like diagrams. So we have the window trim piece at the top and the pieces of glass and then you have a, the window channel. You start by just taking off that top piece of trim. There's probably four screws that are just exposed and you just unscrew them and pull that piece off. And that gives you access to slide out the assembly. But the first thing you got to do before you can do that is you undo all the screws in that top channel. And to do that, you have to slide the windows like back and forth and try to kind of find these things. There's not too many of them, but they're kind of hidden a little bit. 
So once you unscrew that, then you just tilt the whole assembly in towards the interior of the boat. And then you can take your channel off and then you can probably just push the pieces of glass back in just so you can put the channel down on the ground or something. Because uh, you just want to take these out one at a time. They're pretty heavy and cumbersome. And then you just take the pieces of glass out and that's it. Glasses, glasses out. Then you can take the rest of the uh, the channel pieces out on the, uh, the bottom and the side. Now as easy as that sounded, that's not really how it worked out for me. Uh, when I tried to even slide these windows in their tracks, when we, even when we first got the boat, everything was just locked up and jammed. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't slide them. I thought the tracks were just dirty. Just needed to be clean and it would be fine. But it turns out that the sagging deck and the rotted framing made it so that the actual glass was holding up the flybridge, the ceiling. I'm going to call it the ceiling here. And so to get the windows out, I had to jack up the whole ceiling somehow. So what I did was I used this two-ton hydraulic floor jack. I put it on top of my 2x10 um, support frame that I already had in. Kind of clamped it in position so it didn't wiggle around and stuff. And then I got like a 4x4, this is actually a part of it, a 4x4 pressure treated piece of lumber and I put it on here, obviously it was longer. And then at the top I kind of put a 2x4 or some piece of lumber, I can't remember exactly now what it was, and tied it into the ceiling beam so that it would spread the load across the whole length of the ceiling. And then I just jacked it up. And that seemed to work. It got, it got the roof high enough that I could actually get the windows out. Once all that was done, then it was time to remove the, the rest of the trim pieces on the interior for the window. So I removed the bottom piece and two side pieces. The bottom pieces were pretty rotted uh, just because water was getting trapped in there. Just a design, a design thing. So I'll go through that some other time. Once I got them off, I also noticed that the front window post, um, this was on the port side mostly, the, tr the window trim that surrounded the opening for the window on the outside uh, never lined up quite right. It overlapped and it was weird. And I could clearly see why, what the problem was. Uh, you could see here that all of the pieces of wood in this photograph should be touching. There should be no gaps. And so the forward window post was kind of sliding forward. It was probably forward about three-eighths of an inch or more. And so I had to figure out what was going on here and I came to the conclusion that <clears throat> I still needed to jack up the roof and ceiling a little more. And so I went back to my the same jack I did before and I just set it up the same way and started jacking it up and sure enough that window post just came right into alignment. And I could tell that there was some alignment pin that the factory put in there like a dowel and uh, those holes just came together and uh, lined up on that pin and, and I knew the thing was in the right spot and, uh, and that finally took care of that. I locked all the ceiling in with my supports, locked them up, locked them in and uh, that was it. It was in the right spot again. So finally all this window business was taken care of so now I was going to shift my focus. It was still too cold to start working outside the boat. I still had the shrink wrap totally tightened down on there, so decided to start removing the V-berth, um, all the cabinetry and everything. So that's what I did. The V-berth was just basically some uh, cabinets at the base, half-inch plywood platform, bulkhead type things, and then tabbed into the hull. And if you're not familiar with tabbing, it's just you know, it's just taking a strip of fiberglass and connecting the hull with a piece of furniture or whatever you're connecting it to in the corner and that kind of holds it in position. So that's what I had to do. I, I took out all the uh, cabinets and it all came out fairly easy. Broke a few of the screws, taking it out. The floor was pretty spongy down there so some of the stuff just ripped out of it. It was pretty easy to remove. You know, once I got the V-berth out then 
The next thing to remove is going to be the lockers. Um, the factory called them lockers. I'll just call I call them main cabinets. I just wanted to remove these things. I was knew I was going to be building new ones because the bottoms uh, suffer from the same water damage from the windshield, and uh, that plywood just soaked up the water like a sponge, and it was all delaminated at the bottom. So the tops looked halfway decent, but the bottoms were shot. So these once again came out good. Uh, there was a lot of tabbing to cut along the edge, and the starboard side one, all the wires from the flybridge came down into it through this plastic tube, which is a wonderful looking thing. Uh, so instead of trying to take all those wires apart, I decided to just cut the top of the cabinet uh, and the bottom where the wires came out, and uh, just so I could pull the whole thing straight out not to disconnect any wire. So that worked out good. Um, and I just kept those cabinets intact because I knew I was going to need them to uh, build the new ones. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for watching this episode. Um, give it a like if you liked it. Um, share it with someone you think might think this kind of thing is entertaining. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, the next episode, episode three, we're going to remove and replace some of the cabin soil up in the V-birth area. And I'm going to continue working along the gunnels, uh, removing, decking, and replacing shear cleaners. So until then, um, have a good one, and we'll see you soon. I hope that's the last.